perhaps the most important aspect of what we do with our rigs has nothing to do with the rigging. It is, of course, animation. And how you go about the task of that animation with the rigs is actually a bit of a variable process. We've seen plenty of the kinds of setups that Rigit creates and how the different parts work and so on. And whilst you have these very clever and often convenient control systems available with the rig parts, one of the aims in the way that they're created is that they are somewhat variable so that different animators can adopt slightly different styles of how they go around structuring the keyframes and by extension how they structure what keyframes go on what item to create animation in a way that is more natural for them. Clearly, the control systems are designed the way that they are designed, so there is some level of limitation in how you can actually go about using them. But there is no fixed prescriptive way in which you have to do it, or which you have to work with a character rig. So for this example, we're just going to look at a couple of basic ways of walk cycling to see how you might structure your keyframes on different items in different ways. So here we have our character setting up to do a bit of a walk, We've just got him in the basic contact pose there. There are, of course, many ways that you can go about structuring the keyframes for walk cycle. But in this instance, we're just going to use a straight ahead roughing out approach, keying and tweening as we go. So first thing then, the main items that I'm just going to be working on here in order to shift him forwards, that is, is the main route and the two leg IK routes there. Got the whole rig selected here in the animation toolbox. So I'll pose copy him. And I'll run forward 12 frames, check mirror and paste, swap the pose over to the opposing side. Now you can't see me doing it here, but I'm just sort of putting my finger on the screen at the point of contact here on the leading foot, or at least of the point of the axis, so that when I jump ahead to the next keyframe, I can grab that same foot and just line it pretty much back up like that. Uncheck mirror, move my finger to the next one here, Paste again, that gets me back the original pose, move it out, check mirror, move my finger over here, paste that mirrored version of the pose, which of course just jumps back here, drag it forwards again to that point. And I'm sure you can see where it is that we're going with this. And so like that, quite quickly, we have knocked in here the basic mechanics of a walk cycle. Pretty much irrespective of the types of controllers or indeed the rig that you're using, these are the most basic pieces that you would key in for the basics of the walk cycle. Legs going back and forward and of course the main route just travelling forwards there. We see of course that since we use TCB curves when we were keying, the feet are scooting around there, obviously due to the TCB interpolation. So I'm just going to grab those, come back to selected parts, and I'm going to use a flatten holds modifier here. Let's give it a try at 0.05, see what that gets us. There we go, that holds out our keyframes for us there, so I'll just apply that. And there we are, the footsteps are nicely locked off there, even though of course I was just placing them roughly. So this is the point where we really get into it, and that's the actual detailing of the cycle. So we'll just do each one separately. So I'll just bring this down to 25 here. And this just lets us see a single cycle repeating like this. So option one. First of all, let's look at this trailing foot here. Now, of course, one of the things that the foot rig does is that it does this auto peel action like this when the foot comes away on IK. So perhaps we'll just use that as the leg or as the hip starts to move forward here. Let's say, I don't know, four frames shall we say just using selected i'm going to copy the pose there come forward those four frames and just paste it back just quickly in that so as it flattens the hold for us and we see that without having to actually perform any kind of keyframe animation on the foot at all there it does the lift for us our foot system is handling that automatically seems pretty good so we'll try the same here on the other foot copy your pose jump forward ahead paste it make sure that our little foot controller there is at zero at that same point. Let's quick clean it to keep the flat hold like that. And there we go. We see that the feet peel themselves off in that way as he takes each step. All we have to do is a single hold keyframe on the actual main null itself. Now I had just roughly positioned this up to give the contact point before the foot comes down. So of course we want to fix that. So let's just jump one, two frames ought to be enough. 
can just pop that back to zero there. Again, we see it doing a little bounce, a little quick clean, can grab the other reverse foot control there. Again, one, two, pop it back to zero, quick clean it. You'll notice that I am quick cleaning after every single move of an item here. Often you wouldn't do that. You'd know the keys that you were going to be laying down. And of course you'd lay them in and then you just quick clean them on bulk. I'm just doing it for the purpose of demonstration in this instance. But we can see that like that, with very few keyframes, just the operation of the foot system itself, we are getting pretty good footstep action. We're just centering on the route there to watch it and we can see him going along, producing that kind of motion. So what about the hip itself? At the minute, that's just coming along nice and flat, very dull and boring. Obviously that would normally move up and down. So we can simply just lift from here. So at this point we can lift him up and come up to there and he'll walk over, come to here, the contact point, and perhaps three frames after that, we have him sort of plop down a little bit as the leg takes the weight perhaps. Of course we replicate that over here. That means he's only got a two frame lift, so I am just gonna shove that across. Perhaps seven is more ideal. And so the same on the other side of the cycle. We'll just let him lift up a little there. Okay, there we go. We also want some side to side action. As the character walks along, you know, his weight will shift from one foot to the next like this. Of course, if we look at the X axis here, we see that whilst I was keying the up down motion on Y there, I've created a bunch of zero keyframes on the X. We can fix that, of course, by just doing a quick clean. That, of course, has now deleted those keys on the X since they were all constant. And so we can just start shifting him side to side ever so slightly like this. And of course, our two pieces of animation are not interfering with one another. That being, of course, the animation on the Y channel and the animation here on the X channel. There we go, one side and the next. Plop, 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 doing the little side to side thing there. Of course, his hips will also swing as he's going along. We can just quick clean off his main route there again to ensure that he is indeed cleaned up on the bank so we haven't got a bunch of zero keyframes caused by having the all channels auto key here. So there we go, tip that way here. Over at that point, he's up on that side here, still mostly up there until he pops over like this. So there we go, it's got the side to side action of the hip there. And of course, his body is now bobbing around. So we'd want to start counteracting that motion on the upper body. There we go. So we're getting the stepping action walking around like this. Hips are doing a swing and a tilt, a shift. And of course, the upper body is counteracting and the feet are acting in place and everything's seemingly OK. So what we really see there is one option for how we might be structuring the controls and you know what keyframes are placed on which items and how we get a key set together and it works out you know reasonably well enough here so let's go and have a look at another option so we'll look at the next cycle block which is of course just that repetition of our rough out keys here we'll start by doing that same thing of plopping the feet down flat after two frames we'll make sure that those are nice and flat for the sake of example here. So there we have the feet doing their mandatory flap down as they hit the ground. Let's take a look at getting some more detail into the foot action then. We can do a very similar thing in one respect, as in we can keep the actual IK goal in its place a few frames longer when he's coming to do the lift off like that. But rather than just letting him peel his foot off from the action of the control rig itself, we shall instead start working on the actual foot control system that we have. So perhaps up until this point, the reverse foot null there will want to stay nice and still. At this point, we can lift it up on the Y axis there. And that of course gives him the lift at the ball of the foot like this. We're now able to animate a bit more detail into our foot. Over the next, let's say one, two, three, four frames, we'll bring it down on its Y position, back to zero, and start to tip it forwards there via the Z position. And this creates this kind of an action for us, or at least it does once we clean up those 
TCB interpolations like this. We start to get this action. And of course, as the foot swings forward there, we can see it turning over. And of course, it doesn't penetrate the ground because it's all within the foot space. If we were wanting, we could come across in this intervening point, just grab the main IK goal there and actively lift the foot from the ground if we so desired, perhaps tipping it an extra little bit like that and consequently giving us an action on the foot just like this, which really looks quite nice and natural for the passover. A few more keyframes to work with. We have the extra lift keys going on here in the foot. Of course, we could have done that in the last pass style that we did. Mainly, we've got extra key management going on on this null here to create the little subtle actions in the footstep there. So let's look at this second right side foot and begin to examine another option. We've just got the basic action going on there. And again, I'm just using the auto peel. I haven't bothered to animate the little reverse foot control at all here. What we'll see is our other option is to actually expose the offsets. So we pick up here the offset foot controller. And what this enables us to do is to take the main IK foot controller that we've already animated just simply and flat along the ground here and not to interfere with it anymore. Rather, we can just use the offset. So he starts to lift up there. And as his foot begins to come forward, we can key the offset there, key it back here in the contact position. And then at some in-between point around here, we can just lift it up pop a little bit of a turn on it, position it somewhere just so. It's probably easier if I spin round because of course his foot is occluded by his other leg there. And we see that the offset does that action for us and we don't need to start meddling with the actual IK, the main IK goal that is, or the main IK item. We're able to just leave that with nice simple keys on it and perform our detailing animation onto the actual foot offset item itself here. We can, for instance, use this if we want to do a thing that is very common in walk cycles, which is where you have a little bit of kick through. That is the foot sort of jumps out a little bit. We swing our feet out ever so slightly and then plop them down on the ground like that. So we get a hook out and stomp nice and easily done via the offset control on the IK system there. Of course, we can do the same thing for the hip or the main root, I should say, as the main root, of course, has an offset, which we can see here. And so in the same way that previously we put the shift side to side and the tilt on the main root itself, we don't have to interfere with that if we don't want to. We can just keep a nice, clean, straight line, as it were, animation on the main root and come in here and we can begin putting the little shifts and tilts and the other such adjustments onto the root offset, working it just like this. So we see that we get a nice simple repeat motion on the root offset item, working just like this. And of course, we would then counter animate the spine just as we did before. And so we start again, bear cycle, once more, and you'll see that here, I haven't bothered to put any action on the reverse foot null here whatsoever. The feet are acting completely flat, apart from, of course, their automated action within the system itself. All I've got is that slight delay in holding the IKs back before they begin to lift off. So let's see what we can do here. Well, we can come here, one, two, three, forwards, key that in place. We'll come back to the contact point here and we'll just simply animate the contact directly from the IK itself, just like this. We can position it and manipulate it into position and he'll just drop onto the foot like that as he walks forward. So we can just act directly on the IK controller without any need to mess around with those items in the foot system relying on the peel if we want here, but we still have other options that we can use, such as, of course, the IK actual. We would key that off at some point, of course, come to the point where he's ready to contact, which is around there, key it again to hold it in place. And then we could do some manner of work 
like this. So we get the IK actual controller and we've perhaps got it something like this and a few frames later we get him right up here ready to start moving his foot forward somewhere at the passing pose. We can pull it up like that, bring it back around here, creating an action that works in this way. And you see that like that, we're able to just use those two controllers to get the passing, lifting and dropping action on the foot. The IK actual, which is of course the actual goal item that is being reached for by the IK chain, but which works within the space of this master IK null here. And so we can operate his feet and legs using that method if we prefer. The bob up and down action of of course the root, the hips here, and of course the side to side. As we saw, we can either do that on the main root item or we can do it of course on the offset item. But in this rig, we've created a hips root null, which is of course the master or the parent of the leg system, which is independent of the main root and of the spine. And so of course, when it comes to doing the hip swing, then we are able to swing his hips using this controller here to pop in the swinging action. And what we don't need to do now in this instance, of course, is to be counter animating the spine to work against the swinging and tilting of the hips. Obviously, with the spine being so rigid, it looks a little weird, so you can still pop a little action on here. But what you don't need to do so much is to actually create counter animation where you would need to have this synced in to the actions of the hips so rigidly, which of course becomes a bit more of a pain when you are retiming your animation. It allows you to get the action on the hips right irrespective of what the upper body is doing. You can treat them as two separate systems in that way. How about other parts and systems? Well, of course, you know, we've got the spine tilting side to side or the body tilting side to side in the previous cycles. The head, of course, you might want to be tipping back and forth. Here, we've just got the FK head on this character. We could have, of course, used the world space method on the head, which would have kept it pointing in a single direction or rather floating around and we could then have animated the world space head controller to get again another separate system. We could have used the hips root here to isolate and create a separate system for the entire lower body. You can even if you want start to shove it around side to side though because this disconnects it from the upper body you might not want to push that too far. But at least in terms of the rotations, which is, of course, the majority of what is going on in a walk cycle or many other motions, then you can isolate the lower body by having a control such as this present. You can then, of course, animate the main upper body separately from that with its own timing. And of course, if you'd use something like the head world space method, then that would be able to work as an isolated system from the upper body as well. So hopefully that gives you something of an overview as to how you can take the rigs generated by Rigit, block out your motions roughly and quickly using the various tools available here on the animation toolbox, clean them up as you go using curve filters, either to clean spline motion that you've just keyed in or that you've converted to after ordinarily starting out with linear keyframes if that's the way you prefer to work. And most of all, of course, how you can take the control systems that are present in the rigs and use them in different ways and different combinations to find a style of structuring your keyframes that is both fast and efficient for the project you're working on and, of course, the time that you have to produce it, the kind of detail that you're wanting to be able to inject into the motion, and how you go about creating a structure of keyframes within your timeline that you can easily move around, manipulate, retime, respace, and so on.